I'm going to uh, begin the meeting, and then if uh, the link occurs, then we'll, they'll catch up with us. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Huffman and I, have, uh, they'll be bugging us in a little while to go to votes, 10 or 15 minutes, hopefully more. And so we didn't want to, uh, we don't want to have to leave abruptly before we even started. But uh, we, uh, the vice ranking member and myself, uh, uh, are welcome you here uh, uh, from your busy schedules. Uh, all the business leaders that are here in the outdoor uh, recreation industry are very appreciative of your time. And, uh, and to talk about, I think, is a very critical issue that's, that we are trying to resolve before the end of, uh, uh, before we all depart at the end of, uh, at the end of this month. Uh, we convene this meeting with you to discuss the future of the Land and Water Conservation Fund and the critical interplay between the conservation and the economy. Uh, I want to I thank you for being here. As we're like one week away from the lapse in the LWCF's authorization, this is, uh, I think, a very important conversation. We look forward to hearing your perspectives and identifying opportunities uh, for collaboration, partnership, and, and getting what was the, this permanent reauthorization done. Uh, Americans overwhelmingly support the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Uh, it's the pyramid program dedicated to protecting open space, completing and complementing our national parks and our public lands. The support was evident and continues to be evident in H.R. 502. My bill would make LWCF permanent, has 235 bipartisan co-sponsors, uh, well over the majority of the House, well over 218 that's required for legislation to vote, to, to, uh, to pass. Unfortunately, although it was reported out of committee by voice vote, House Republican leadership uh, has stalled consideration of this bill, and now we're a little over a week or so uh, from the pending expiration date for the fund. This is a completely avoidable situation. We introduced the bill last year, repeatedly asked for hearings, repeatedly asked for committee consideration, and it wasn't until two weeks ago, just a few short months before the end of the session, that it got some traction. And uh, we believe that Congress needs to prioritize uh, this legislation and, in a sense, prioritize conservation. And, uh, and we have a 50-year commitment uh, that has been successful. Uh, but as you know, LWCF is not simply about preserving open spaces and protecting our air, water, and lands. It's good for business, and it's good for the overall economy. And that is why your presence is so important. I think we, uh, the uh, people opposed to the fund want to drive us into a narrow discussion, when this is a very broad discussion, and it involves the economy, it involves jobs, and it involves sustenance for many, many communities in rural America uh, across this nation. And uh, it's 7.6 million jobs and 887 billion in consumer spending in 2017. Uh, a recent poll found that 82% of Western business owners support ongoing and long-term funding for LWCF. They're 700 million acres of land managed by the Department of Interior, and there was 870 million recreational visits in 2016. Uh, that's why we're all supporters of the fund and this program, and uh, we need to continue to fight for its future. We think there's an urgency to that. We think that we believe strongly and support it strongly the permanent reauthorization of this fund so we don't have to go through these agonizing, waiting, last-minute times, which has happened too often. We also, we also fought and retained the core mission of the fund so that it wasn't, it wasn't displaced or used for purposes like deferred maintenance. It should be an obligation, uh, an important obligation, but not use the fund as the resource primarily for that obligation. And, uh, and giving states uh, a bigger share of the fund it really is not a not a loss for us. I think the states support it, the public support it, and I think it just enhances the, uh, the constituents' support for the fund, which is vital. Uh, it's, uh, 
It's a program that as we near the clock ticks down, we're gonna continue to press. We, I don't believe, uh, I believe we'll have an opportunity to do that for a permanent reauthorization, whether it is in the lame duck session, which is unfortunate, or whether it is, uh, I don't think we'll see it in a, in a continuing resolution. Uh, and, and I think that would be ch another short-term fix is not, is not the goal of the, of, the, uh, of the legislation or of the effort that we've put into it and the effort that you've put into it. But your voices are needed, especially at this juncture in time, uh, to make sure that people know it's a priority and not only the constituent support for the fund, but the economic benefit derived by the American people and by the economy as a whole. That has to be driven home. I think people minimize how important that is and it's vital and we're, we're beginning to make a bigger, bigger statement about what that means and it's been through your help, your advice, your information that has got us to that point. So with that, let me ask my uh, colleague and friend, Mr. Huffman, uh, for any comments he might have, sir. Soon to be Chairman Grijalva. I uh, want to thank you for convening this round table to talk about this important program, Land and Water Conservation Fund. And also, uh, thanks to the participants who've joined us today, I see around this room a lot of great advocates for public land. I also see a lot of brands that constituents in my district spend a lot of money on, and I spend a lot of money on. So thank you for being responsible corporate citizens and advocating for outdoor recreation, uh, which we all love and want to continue to support. LWCF has meant a lot to California and a lot to my district on the north coast of California, where federal and state projects were supported with over $40 million from this fund uh, just during the period from 2005 to 2015, during that 10-year window. And a prime example of that uh, is in my district, the Smith River National Recreation Area in Del Norte County. Over this 10-year period, LWCF provided funding for projects spanning a total of 5,400 acres, and this protected a main tributary of the Smith River, which of course is the only major undammed river in the state of California. Uh, one of the very best salmon strongholds on the Pacific Coast, and I will argue one of the most beautiful places in the world. This uh, watershed provides critical habitat for salmon as well as a wide range of recreational opportunities as part of the Smith River NRA. And it's a clear example of the many conservation and recreation benefits provided by LWCF uh, to my constituents and a lot of other outdoor enthusiasts who visit the North Coast. Unfortunately, uh, projects that are in process in my district would be on the line if LWCF expires this month, along with countless other projects from California and in every other part of the country. Uh, as those in this room today know very well, an LWCF expiration doesn't just mean that projects can't move forward, it means that local economies wouldn't be afforded the chance to continue growing their businesses and outdoor recreation opportunities. Everybody here knows that protected lands are good for the public and good for business. And in my district, residents spend something in the order of $1.93 billion every year on outdoor recreation. And I believe that number actually understates the real economic multiplier uh, of the recreation and the visitation that we get. People who come to see the unique and diverse landscapes from the old growth redwoods to our very own uh, Alps in the Trinity Wilderness. Outdoor recreation, whether it is hiking or fishing or biking, is a way of life on the North Coast, and over 100 outdoor businesses in my district recognize this fact and get it. I'd like to thank again the participants in this roundtable, especially Ranking Member Grijalva, who is making a Herculean effort here in the final days of this session to address this issue, and of course we can't do it without all of you. Uh, it is our job to keep up the attention on LWCF so that public lands can be supported for future generations of Americans to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Huffman reminded me, in, in my district in Avondale, uh, up in Phoenix, an urban part of, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a, on a part that has some economic challenges, to say the least, there's Reposa Park. Um, built with in collaboration with the county and the, and the Land and Water Conservation Fund.
providing the, one of the only green spaces for those neighborhoods, uh, providing recreational opportunities and, and outdoor opportunities for kids that don't normally access or can access those areas. And from that introduction at that park, it extends to the other public lands and opportunities for those families. So this fund has had an impact and its constituency is diverse, it's urban, it's not urban, it's rural, and, and it's because, it, because this fund has been dedicated to providing recreational opportunities, but also in many cases, like the cases of Reposa Park, first time opportunities for some communities. And I, I think we forget that it's been an access point that, uh, that hasn't given enough credit sometimes. With that, let me ask Mr. Sterling if you could start by introducing yourself, then we can go around and your perspective, your comments, they're more than welcome and any ideas that you have for us as to how we continue to push this uh, over the finish line. Great. Sir? And thank you, Congressman Grijalva, and thank you, uh, Congressman Huffman. You both have been real champions for not just the Land and Water Conservation Fund, but, but many conservation initiatives, and we, we deeply appreciate that. Um, my name is John Sterling. I'm the executive director of the Outdoor Industry Conservation Alliance. And we're a group of about 225 outdoor brands that work together to support conservation efforts on the local level. And many of our member companies are represented here. So I'm going to be really brief because you really want to hear from them. Um, the Conservation Alliance feels strongly that the Land and Water Conservation Fund needs to be permanently reauthorized with dedicated funding. And, and I think you'll hear that throughout the, the comments today. Uh, the reason for that is that, that uh, the, the fund provides necessary uh, resources to acquire and, and protect lands that benefit outdoor recreation. And Congressman Huffman, you mentioned the Smith River, uh, the Conservation Alliance, our main purpose is to collect dues from our member companies and give it away to organizations working on the local level to, to protect lands. And we, we funded the Smith River Alliance for their work on that. Um, so uh, we know we have dozens of stories about places around the country that have been protected thanks to the Land and Water Conservation Fund. But, but what's really exciting is what happens once those lands are protected and the opportunities for outdoor recreation that they provide. Um, so, uh, again, I'm going to pass this off to our, our, our members here, but uh, we have a letter signed by 282 outdoor businesses that uh, we organized with uh, our pals at the Outdoor Industry Association, and we'll leave you a copy of that. Um, and then I just want to end with a, a quick story. I recently did a trip down the John Day River in my home state of Oregon, which uh, for a long time was an 80-mile stretch of river that is a spectacular wilderness experience, but one you can only do if you have about five or six days. And a few years ago, the Western Rivers Conservancy purchased an access point about halfway through that trip that now allows people to come and, and turn that into a weekend trip. Uh, and the, the number of people that are now enjoying the wild and scenic John Day River has, has really gone through the roof, uh, which is great. And finally, um, we're also going to leave you with about 400 postcards that were signed by employees of outdoor industry companies, again, asking that we uh, permanently reauthorize the Land and Water Conservation Fund. It really is a good idea. Hi, my name is Amy Roberts, and I'm the executive director for Outdoor Industry Association. And so um, the counterpart group that work with um, John's group, um, representing many of the same companies um, on the letter, as well as we've been advocating along with many other groups on behalf of LD LWCF for at least 20 years, I would say, at this point. Um, one thing I just wanted to share is I think we learn as we go along through the process. And a couple of my learnings, I really uh, am gratified to see the proposal that came out of the House Natural Resources Committee in terms of the unity behind that. Um, I think it's important that we continue to build um, the bipartisan support for the program. And um, where I think we've you know, continue to struggle is really around the intensity behind the support, um, notwithstanding the two folks here. 
Um, but so I really, I feel like it's our job to make sure that members not only sign on to the program, but that they're actually able to really push it and prioritize um, LWCF in terms of what needs to get done before the end of the year. And that's why we're here um, in turn, just in, you know, we want to increase the intensity of the support behind the program, making sure that it does get don done, if not this week with the CR, then in the lame duck session. I think the other thing is our industry has an opportunity to talk to our consumers as, and highlight specific projects in their district that they can relate to where they recreate, you know, maybe every day after work or they yeah. go to on the weekends and being able to talk about place-based LWCF projects is really powerful. So that's something that um, we are definitely looking to as we have an opportunity to talk to our consumers. So thank you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but define intensity <laughs> in terms of people, members. Yes, I feel like um, we need more champions who okay. are taking on the same st um, sort of attitude that you've shown, Chairman Grijalva, around saying that this, you know, legislation can't move forward in other areas until LWCF is fully funded. So making it a priority for more members, okay. yes. Thank you. Uh, greetings and thank you for having us here. My name is Mark Steinbuck. I'm with Keen Footwear. Uh, we are a footwear and apparel company based in Portland, Oregon. We're about 15 years old and we are a family owned and independent outdoor industry company that's also been a part of the Conservation Alliance and uh, a part of funding communities, uh, conservation efforts and disaster relief for uh, pretty much our entire existence as a brand. Um, and we're here to both uh, celebrate and thank you for uh, supporting the Land and Water Conservation Fund and for reauthorization uh, because it's a real part, a deep part of our brand identity uh, given that our entire brand ethic is what we call better takes action or, or being a responsible corporate citizen as you put it um, by not only giving back to communities through conservation and, uh, and community focused grants but also taking action to whether it's on Capitol Hill or with our fans to educate uh, our consumer groups about what makes these places special and what actually protects them. So not only are we here today to speak directly to you on behalf of our company and our fans, uh, but we speak directly to our fans through special event activations like phone booths and online uh, interactions which directly educate about Land and Water Conservation Fund and everything that it does to increase accessibility and recreation across the country. So. Um, thank you once again for, for your support. Hi, my name is Rebecca Goodstein. I'm from Patagonia. Thank you for having us. Good to see you all. Patagonia is an outdoor retailer based in the great state of California. California Benefit Corporation. California Benefit Corporation. It's one of the first, right? <laughs> the first. So we're an outdoor retailer, but we are also known for our enthusiastic appreciation and advocacy of public lands. And as you probably know, we have you know, retail stores in um, about, we have about 34 retail stores in the US, including one right down the street, right down Pennsylvania Avenue in Georgetown, which sits at the beginning of the CNO Canal. The CNO Canal is a, a beautiful um, place right next to our store that's received $44 million from the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And not only is it a great place for our employees and our customers to visit our, to get to work and to visit our store, but we also have a lot of community cleanups and we have community picnics and a lot of our environmental grantees use the canal as a place for events. So we are in the business of getting people outside and we just know as, as an employer and as a business and as Americans, the Land and Water Conservation Fund is integral to our continued success as a company and advocate for public lands. So thank you for all of your work and advocacy. Thank you very much. And uh, let, let me uh, ask my uh, colleague uh, from Arizona, Mr. Gallego, if he's any, any comments. And also uh, Brandon Bagato, who, who uh, does all the work on the Public Lands Committee. Uh, and and uh, 
uh, a very important resource to the members and hopefully to yourselves as well. Uh, and if we, I think votes have been called and if we have to rush out of here, Brandon will ship roles and continue the discussion. We don't want it to end and uh, we certainly want the people that are uh, viewing us or listening to us to continue to hear from you. So uh, apologize for our departure. We can't control that. When we're in the majority, we will. Yeah. <laughs> but until then, uh, Mr. Gallego. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, or soon to be chairman, I should say. Uh, thank you for, to all my colleagues. It's been an exciting uh, year working on the LWCF. Um, and you know, for us Westerners, it is particularly uh, special and sacred. We have so much, and especially uh, Congressman Grijalva and I represent so much of Arizona that is tied uh, to the success of LWCF, whether it's our open spaces, our national parks. You know, I think last estimate we had in Arizona is that one way or the other, it's about $12.1 billion worth of economic impact that comes from the outdoors. And as a military veteran, I think people seem to forget also how much, how important the LWCF is for our military uh, sites, our burial sites and our cemeteries, uh, such, such that you know, many of these places would not be in the uh, state that they are in terms of being able to visit and be able to be studied uh, and, and also revered by many of our um, fellow citizens if it wasn't for the LWCF. So uh, I really want to commend Congressman uh, Grijalva for really sticking it uh, out this year. Uh, you know, he talked to us throughout the whole year about what his strategy was. Uh, and uh, you know he really uh, uh, pulled through, uh, considering that he was dealing with a hostile administration, a hostile House, and a hostile Senate. The fact that he uh, got us such favorable terms, uh, you know, and and it's going to, in my opinion, go down as one of the biggest victories for the environmental movement. So I really want to commend uh, the thank future you. chairman for that. So thank you again, and thank you all for also be participating from the outside in pushing this issue. Uh, because it really did make a difference, too. Thank you again. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, my name is Josie Norris, and I manage the grant program and communications for the Conservation Alliance. And I, just, I work directly with our grantees, and I wanted to just share an example of a project uh, that has, is very significant that is dependent on LWCF funding. Uh, there's a 10,000 acre acquisition that one of our grantees is working on uh, called Trinity Divide, which is west of Mount Shasta, and it contains 17 miles of the Pacific Crest Trail. So it's a nationally significant um, acquisition that really is an economic driver uh, for folks on the PCT. And so that's the one of the types of projects that is dependent on LWCF, and we really appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll start. Um, hi, my name is Tag Kleiner, and I'm with uh, Farbank Enterprises. We are um, a collection of brands, which includes Sage Fly Fishing, uh, Reddington Fly Fishing, Rio Products, and Flywater Travel. Um, we manufacture in the U.S., both in the state of Washington and, and Idaho. And um, you know, from a macro level, LWCF provides um, thank you um, provides uh, public lands, clean water, clean air, uh, which in its simplest terms is what we're in the business of. We sell fly rods so people can go fly fishing and um, no fish, no fishing. So it's essential to our business. Uh, on a local level, what LWCF has done um, in local communities, I think it's important to recognize, uh, it, it does create community. The, the spot where I take my dog for walks on Bainbridge Island is an LWCF um, project, Gasm Lake. Uh, just lived in, I lived in Ketchum, Idaho for 20 years and everything my children did growing up from the local pool to the Ketchum City Park to the waterfront park are all LWCF um, projects. Um, and it becomes really important when we look at recruiting and re retaining our employees, especially in Seattle where it's tough for us to compete with uh, tech salaries. Uh, we compete on lifestyle and um, the ability for our employees to enjoy a life outdoors and having those close to home opportunities, um, which is what LCF helps support is uh, really essential for our business and the future of our business. So appreciate all the hard work that's being put in to reauthorize. Hi there, I'm Chris Randall. I work for Cliff Bar. Uh, we're one bridge away from Congressman Huffman's district. Um, I'm sorry to see him walk out. Uh, uh, but we're one of the leading manufacturers of energy bars in the United States. Uh, we have about 450 employees in Emeryville. We also have a baking facility in Twin Falls, Idaho. 
about 250 people there and another 250 people in Indianapolis. Um, and like everyone else here, our brand was born in the outdoors. Um, Gary Erickson's the founder of the company and he walked and hiked and climbed with his dad in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So it's, it's really baked into our DNA. And we know the more people get outside, the more they use our product. So it's good for our business. Um, and just at lunch, I was looking at the local impact of the fund. Um, and there's actually a space uh, just literally a mile from my home where I trail run all the time and I had no idea. So I think collectively we all realize there's sort of a marketing opportunity around the fund that we need to do a little bit better job of, but I'm just grateful for that space to be upgraded because of the fund. So thank you. Hello, my name is Mindy Hoffman. I'm also from Keen Footwear. And we are an outdoor company that mainly makes shoes. So we make primarily hiking and water shoes. We've been around for 15 years, and in that time, we've actually donated $15 million to nonprofit organizations around the world that promote outdoor recreation and land and water conservation. So we're not only asking Congress to delegate funds to the LWCF, but we also put our money where our mouth is and do that ourselves. So just wanted to make that point that we're not just asking, we're also doing. Um, also, I wanted to touch on the fact that Reb Grijalva actually said, um, made a good point about access points. So the LWCF um, increases the amount of access points and touch points for communities that don't often go in the outdoors. And I kind of like to call it like, a, like it's a gateway, right? So when they have access to something nearby that they can go to on the weekend or just for a couple hours, then they realize how much they enjoy it and then they go to our national parks or something bigger. Um, so the LWCF funds are actually way more important in my mind than um, some of the bigger national projects. So it's very important to us, to our customers, and to our employees to have LWCF funds protected. Okay. Didn't catch that part. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. Thank you for having us here. Um, my name is Kate Payne. I'm Vice President of Marketing for Nemo Equipment. So we're an outdoor gear brand based in Dover, New Hampshire. We're about 15 minutes from the ocean in one direction and then about an hour and a half south of the White Mountain National Forest in the other direction. So um, obviously we have a great playground for ourselves. It's a really big retention point and recruiting point for employees. We take all interviewees out mountain biking um, on a local LWCF funded property um, as part of the interview process. And uh, when people hear that, that's usually the, the clincher. <laughs> They're like, yep, that followed by happy hour. Okay, we're in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when can I start? Um, I, it's not just for our employees' well-being and happiness, though. The LWCF is important to us. Um, we make tents. We make sleeping bags. We make uh, sleeping pads. We make gear designed for sleeping outside comfortably overnight. Uh, that's where our brand was born 16 years ago, um, back when it was more fashionable to you know, die trying to climb a mountain. Um, and these days it's a little bit more fashionable just to get outside and more and more people are participating in getting outside and in the outdoor recreation economy. And the numbers that have um, come to light over the last couple of years on the national level, um, uh, the uh, Representative Grijalva um, mentioned at the beginning are really important, the $887 billion in New Hampshire um, we contribute, the outdoor recreation economy contributes $8.7 billion uh, in consumer spending annually. Um, it re, New Hampshire received $163 million of LWCF funds, um, and those are in places like our most epic White, National, White Mountain National Forest. Um, but we've seen also, as trends have changed in the outdoor industry, um, people are doing more adventuring close to home. They're fitting their adventures into what we call micro-adventures, which is taking all the spirit of a full adventure and squashing it into two or three hours or maybe one overnight. And these places where they're doing it are close to home. They're 10 minutes away from home. They're 20 minutes away where they can take their kids out for their first camping trip at Pawtuckaway State uh, Park, which is 20 minutes away from our office, a recipient, recipient of LWCF funds. Um, so we can't overstate the importance of uh, the investment in these areas that act as gateways. It has been mentioned several times before, um, and they allow people to get out on a daily basis, uh, on a weekly basis, and experience the outdoors and all of the health 
and well-being that that brings to them, and then the huge economic driver that it is. Um, just to finish up with a couple of New Hampshire-specific numbers, um, 80,000 direct jobs in the outdoor rec economy, $2.6 billion in wages and salaries, and nearly a half a billion dollars in tax revenue from the outdoor rec economy. And it would be sloppy math to uh, contribute the 163 million in LWCF to all of the, the, those numbers. But if you did that, it'd be a pretty impressive return on investment um, if you drew that line. And we see a pretty direct line between the two. Um, so I uh, would like to thank you for your work this year um, to work on reauthorizing, permanently reauthorizing LWCF. Um, and uh, offer our support for anything that we can do as a small business in helping to move this forward. Hello. Thanks for having us here. I'm Amy Allison. I work with a lifestyle brand called Eno. We primarily make hammocks, but other lifestyle gear to get people outdoors um, and enjoying these beautiful places that we're talking about protecting today. Um, I think one thing that we've done as a brand is made getting outdoors really accessible. Everyone, uh, no one can really argue with the enjoyment of a hammock and how great it is to get that outdoors. So whether they're taking it in their backyard or in the back country, um, they're finding ways to get out, sit back and relax in these beautiful places. Um, we're based in Asheville, North Carolina. We're just minutes, our headquarters minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is the uh, most visited national park unit in the United States. And we are out playing on it every weekend. And as employees um, and with our family members, we're doing that. Um, so we've all talked about the bottom line and how it's really important to our businesses. And so we know that and we know that you see that value. So just on a personal uh, note, we were driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway recently with my son who's nine years old and just listening to the music and he looks out the window and he says, mom, it really is beautiful out there. And we had that success moment as parents of like, we made it happen. <laughs> so we want um, our future generations to be able to see that. So my son and all the others in our, in our country to be able to enjoy these places the same way that we've been able to. So thank you for your support. Hi, Brandon. Kirsten here from the Conservation Alliance. So you've heard from our members, they're all in the business of getting people outside. And as ranking member Grijalva said, LW, LWCF helps folks get outside and sometimes for the first time. Um, so in that sense, LWCF provides the business certainty that a lot of these brands are hoping for in, a, in an economy that's continuing to grow. Uh, Amy, uh, ranking member Grijalva, and I think Representative Huffman all said that the outdoor industry is $887 billion strong and, and growing much quicker than a lot of other industries. So reauthorizing LWCF with permanent funding, permanently with full funding is something that will provide a lot of our businesses the certainty that, they, that they're that they looking for. So thanks for everything you're doing and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thanks for having us, Brandon. Adam Kramer, Executive Director at Outdoor Alliance, represent the uh, human powered user community, mountain bikers, backcountry skiers, kayakers, hikers. Um, and they're in love with LWCF. They get it. Uh, it's equitable. It's fair. It makes a ton of sense. Uh, they're willing to speak up, to be civically engaged. They're committed to permanent reauthorization. And uh, I've had some time to reflect on why, you know, why this passion, this program. And it not only protects landscapes across the country, um, but it provides access points, not just geographic access points, but social access points, cultural access points. It's a, it's a, it's a medium to get people outside. So having that uh, um, complementary uh, benefit of not just protecting places, but connecting people to place, I think is a big reason uh, the community is so committed to this uh, permanent reauthorization. So thanks for all your efforts. I want to thank everyone for taking the time uh, to be here with us today and to share your stories, your personal stories, um, and as the perspectives from your individual companies about the importance of LWCF and you know conservation and public access to, to public lands in general. Um, I apologize that the members had to go. Uh, we can't control the schedule again. again my name is Brandon Bergato and I'm Democratic staff on uh, the Natural Resources Committee. And, you know, kind of here 
in the Hill, working with members and building support for programs like LWCF, I think it's, it's easy for us sometimes to forget about the personal connections that people have to public lands. And um, we look at economic data, um, but we don't always make those connections to, to individual companies um, and you know, people's personal lives. So again, you know, thank you for taking the time to share those stories and helping us get that message across the finish line. Um, it's unfortunate that we are just a few days away from the program expiring. Um, I think we did make a lot of progress. You know, if you would have talked to me a year ago, I wouldn't have thought that we would have reported out by voice vote a bipartisan compromise to permanently authorize LWCF, but we managed to do that, and we managed to do that because of the support that we received from, from your companies and, and organizations like Conservation Alliance and, and the Outdoor Industry Association. I think you know, getting that um, economic message out there was really, really important and has driven um, members toward this program and you know, toward this bipartisan compromise that, that we were able to achieve. I think it's a really um, an impressive achievement that we have over 200 and I'm, I was getting emails today to, to continue co-sponsoring the bill, so I think it'll be up to 240 uh, potentially by the end of the week, members of Congress, and a lot of that is um, thanks to, to the work that, that you've done and, and your companies have done. Um, we made it, you know, we got that milestone, but we, we are still a little short of getting this permanent reauthorization across the finish line. Uh, so I would just implore and encourage everyone to, you know, continue putting that pressure on and getting the message out there about why this is so important. And one of the things that, that we're doing is uh, we're tweeting every hour um, about a site that's been preserved and protected by LWCF, and I think we're gonna continue to try to get that message out there. Um, and the more that you can help us um, magnify and amplify that message, the better. Um, I think you know we're gonna keep pushing. It looks like members are gonna leave town at the end of Friday, uh, or at the end of this week, and we won't be back until um, after the election. Uh, so this will, will be a fight that spills over into the lame duck. Um, but clearly it's not one that, that our members and you know, my bosses are, are gonna stop fighting for. Um, so I just really thank you for your, for your time and for all the work that you put into this important program and everything else that you do. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions if, if that's appropriate, if you think, or um, kind of go from there. Or if anybody else has anything else they wanna say. I guess we go ahead and wrap up. Again, thank you for your time uh, and commitment to LWCF. This is a national priority. Um, and I think, you know, by the end of the year, hopefully we can get to that permanent reauthorization that we're after and don't have to go through this year after year after year. Um, so thanks again.